7 p.m. in Tusla, Oklahoma, a caller called 911. The caller says he is calling for something that he just saw on 75. He said there are three cars on the side of the road. He said as he was approaching them, one gentleman jumped out of his car and ran to the car directly behind him. He said it looked like a gentleman started punching the driver. He said somebody is going to need some help there. The 911 operator said he was going to notify officers. The first respondent arrived and they found an avalanche and another Honda in the middle of the highway. They also saw a woman with a gunshot in the passenger seat of the Honda. Unfortunately, they found the woman dead before they could get to her. A 23 years old detective, Reggie Warren, who joined Homicide three months ago, will lead the case. This will be the second case he will be leading since he joined Homicide. Juan is also a singer who sings on occasions when he is not working. Former homicide detective Justin is the one supervising the scene. According to a witness on the scene, the victim was seen breaking into the avalanche. The witness said the owner shows up in that avalanche. He said he believed the owner had an altercation with the white guy in the Honda. The white guy driving the Honda had fled the scene. He said the bullet penetrated the victim's head and neck. Because the owner of the Honda had fled the scene, the officers cannot search the car unless they have a warrant. The man who fought the man in the Honda stayed on the scene. Detectives took him into the car and made their way back to homicide for questioning. Detective Reggie said he will like to speak to the two witnesses who drove by after the shooting. As soon as they arrived at homicide, Detective Reggie started the interrogation with the man who fought the man in the Honda. Then, tell me what happened, Detective Reggie asked. He said his daughter needed to get to work, so he came to pick her up with the avalanche. He said as soon as he pulled over, he saw two men jump out from his car, and they ran through to the Honda. He said he asked them what they wanted to do, and they told him they were going to shoot his black ass. He said the driver of the Honda pulled a gun at him. He said when he saw the gun, he tried to push him and he started jostling with him. He said it was during that process that he heard a sound from the gun. 4 a.m. in Mobile, Alabama, a call came in from a club on the east side. The 911 operator picks the call and asked where the location of the emergency of the caller was. Shotgun Willie, who called in, said they just saw someone come in and shoot somebody. The caller said one of their security guards is bleeding on the ground unconscious. He said he is not breathing, he is also not moving. Oh my god, oh my god, says the caller. A team of policemen rushed to the scene and found a man lying dead on the floor. Detective Julius Nettles will lead the investigation. Any identification on him, a policeman on the scene of the incident asked. No, another officer replied. He told them to check his pockets if they could find anything. Forty years old Jeremy is the victim. He had a passion for fixing cars. He has been working as a security guard at the club for the past years. He lives behind a loving family. The team finds several bullet fragments at the scene of the incident. Is there any witness to this? An officer asked. Oh yes, one of the bartenders. Another officer replied. The detective goes to the bartender to have a chat with him. He asked him what happened. The bartender said the gentleman that shot Jeremy was just so intoxicated. He said he was kind of being rude and just a little obnoxious. He said the shooter was at his bar and went over there and poured a beer out on the floor. He said when Jeremy saw that he was pouring beer on the floor, he went there and told him to leave. He said the shooter didn't want to leave and so Jeremy just reached around and got him in a chokehold. He said it stops and the man said something and went outside. He said after some time, the man comes back in and they just heard all the shots. The detective asked the bartender how much time the killer stood outside before he came back in. The bartender said 45 seconds. The detective asked him if he knows the person, and the bartender said he knows his face. He said he has seen him before. The detective asked him to describe the killer. He said he is in his mid-30 seconds, short and stocky. The detective asked if he is black or white, and he said he is black. One hour in, the team discovered the shooting may have been cut in on surveillance of the club. They started the video minutes before Jeremy was shot. From the video, they were able to ascertain the story of the bartender who was a witness. The video has finally revealed who the killer was. 
Anybody knows who the suspect is? A detective asked. He got no reply, which means none of the officers knows the suspect. Later, the bartender gives the team a credit card receipt signed by the suspect. The receipt showed that the shooter is Dwayne. 35 years old Dwayne has prior convictions, including second degree forgery and second degree assault. Before heading back to homicide, Detective Nettles and Detective Butner decided to notify Jeremy's family about the incident. The two detectives arrived at Jeremy's house and they knocked on the door. Jeremy's grandmother came out to see who was at the door. She met the two officers who introduced themselves and she allowed them in. Detectives spoke with Jeremy's grandmother who raised him as a son. They left after the conversation. Four hours in, Detective Jeff and Detective Germain head out to show the line up to the bartender who witnesses the shooting. When they got to his home, they tendered the photographs. Detective Jeff told the bartender to take a look at the photo. Angela was survived by two sisters and five children. After some hours, Detective Jason White looks her up in a database and gets an address for her family members. When the team got here, they met a member of Angela's family, and they informed her about the death of Angela. Detective Reggie told her how important it is to get Angela's killer. Detective Reggie told her that the killer is in his 30 seconds. He is either short hair or bald but the family member doesn't know who Angela has been hanging out with. The team thanked her and headed back to homicide. A few hours later, Detective Jason White forwards the team a possible lead from an ATF agent. Back to the murder of 40 years old security guard Jeremy Smith, detectives hope their witness can identify Dwayne as the shooter. The team searches for his last known address and headed there immediately they found it. Detective Nettles and another officer knocked on the door of the apartment and a woman answers the door. Detective Nettle asked her if Dwayne was there and she replied by saying Dwayne would have come out if he was there. She said Dwayne used to live there but he and his girlfriend have left the apartment several months ago. A detective finds Dwayne's girlfriend in the database and gets her phone number. The team put a call through to Dwayne's girlfriend and she gave them her address. 
On their way to Dwayne's girlfriend's house, Dwayne's mom put a call through to the team and told them she and Dwayne would be at the police headquarters in 30 minutes. After some minutes, Dwayne's girlfriend arrived at homicide. She said she heard that Dwayne might have shot somebody. The team asked her where she heard that. She said people have been calling her phone all day. The team asked her when was the last time she talked to Dwayne, and she told them around 4 o'clock in the morning. She said Dwayne came through the door and he was like, they are coming, they are coming for me. Back to the murder of 46 years old Angela. Detectives just received a tape that a man reached out to an attorney and said he was involved in the shooting. The name of the man is Matthew Elijah. 34 years old Matthew Elijah has prior convictions including assault with a deadly weapon. Two o minutes later, Matthew reaches out to an attorney. Some hours later, Matthew put a call through to homicide and agrees to turn himself in. He gave them an address where he will be waiting for them. The team got into the car and headed to the address Matthew gave them. When the team arrived at the address, they surveyed the area waiting for Matthew to approach them. One of the team members who was standing at another place radioed the team members and told them he has a visual on Matthew. He told them Matthew is walking southbound, drinking at 40, and wearing a ball cap. Matthew was finally apprehended and brought to homicide. Detective Reggie reaches out to the man who fought with Matthew at the scene to see if he can identify Matthew. Back to the murder of Jeremy Smith, the team hopes the suspect who is Dwayne's girlfriend can explain why Dwayne may have pulled the trigger. She said Dwayne was like, they are coming, they are coming. The detective asked if he said anything other than that. She said that was what he said and he went right on back out after that. The detective asked if he had a gun at that point and she said she did not see a gun with him at that point because his pants were way down. The detective asked if she tried to call him after that. She said she called, but she got no response. The, the detective appreciated Dwayne's girlfriend for being truthful with him and left the interrogation room. After some minutes, Dwayne's mother brought him to homicide as she promised earlier. It was time for questioning. The detective entered the interrogation room where Dwayne was been held. He told Dwayne that they had already seen the video of what happened. What they just wanted to know is why he did what he did. Dwayne told the officer that he was not ready to say anything. The detective left the interrogation room in surprise. The team went back to the video to see if there is any reason why Dwayne would not want to talk, but they could not find any. The team concluded that Dwayne would be charged for murder. Twelve hours into the next 48, Detective Nettles closed his case.